Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, <laughs> whatever the case is. Anyway, so today we're going to take a look at my Central Electronics Model 100V transmitter. This is a late 1950s transmitter that was extremely high-end for its time, very advanced. Its um, price was around 900 US dollars back in the day, and you'd think of a car costing 300 U or 3,000 US dollars. It gives you kind of an idea. This was a very expensive and very advanced radio. Now, for those of you who are used to any kind of tube transmitting equipment, you'll recognize immediately there are a few things that are missing. There are two doors here, but they do not contain those controls that are missing. And we will get into that. But for now, let me work you through how this works. Basic controls are function. So we're going to go into, obviously, just standby. Voice operated transmit, push to talk, external PTT switch, and then manual for uh, just, it'll turn it to transmit. Mismatch is if your SWR is a little too high. The band switch, well, you can see it switches the operating band. This right here switches the um, re reading of the meter. So you've got line, and then you've got watts input to the finals, and then you've got RF amps out. Of course, you have your tuning dial. It works like this. This is the coarse tuning. There's your fine tuning. This is your calibration level. So you can um, impose, essentially what you can do is you can like talk yourself on frequency. Um, it provides an unmodulated character carrier for zero beating uh, your signal. So that's what that's for. And you can use it to zero beat another station. The Vox Relay will take the carrier out in the transmit position. And we have a limiter, and that's your AGC. And then we have the meter. The meter's pretty neat. It, uh, it provides you with um, information like how many watts input to the finals. There are two lines there. One is AM and one is CW. You can kind of see it there. It's a little hard to see with the light. And, uh, and you've got your carrier suppression. And then the amps, and the amps is uh, RF amps out. Okay, so... Pretty simple. Now we're going to get down to here. I'm going to turn this all the way to the left because it makes it more easy to explain. So this is uh, the mode of operation. You've got your width carrier, so you've got frequency shifted keying with a defined like frequency, which is set down here. CW, so for those that don't know what that is, that's Morse code. Phase modulation, again with a preset carrier frequency. Well, superimposed carrier frequency. And then you've got AM. We all know what AM is. And then we have something I didn't realize. We've got upper side with the carrier and lower side with the carrier. So that's kind of neat. And then we have dual sideband with no carrier and the upper and lower sideband like we're used to. And then we have this null feature. What the null feature is, is down here are two balance controls. And those balance controls allow you to and require you to uh, just adjust the carrier suppression to make sure that it's at its lowest. That's what those are for. Going down here, this is your microphone gain, essentially, talk level. Here's your Vox. I don't remember what QT does. This is your frequency for FSK and, and whatnot. I think, yeah, that's your FSK, like, uh, deviation. And then on the bottom right, you have your release time for Vox. Top right is QT, and I think that's also Vox control. This is your uh, carrier adjustments for both CW and AM. So that's what the little red things on the on the meter are for. You're going to adjust the carrier to be in that range. So that's what that's for. Moving over here, we have some more settings. First of all, these chains are really cool. They are the chains that operate the band switch. See how that moves? Isn't that great? Down here, we just have a uh, top right there. You have your power control. That's just power output. Radio is full power output. You have your CW and FSK monitor, and that's a um, just a volume control for your external. Uh, you can put headphones or an audio uh, speaker or something on the back of the radio to hear your signal. And then we have VFO and crystal operation. So you could, if you wanted to, slap a crystal in here and be dead on frequency. And that might be handy for like 40 meters PSK if I ever want to do that. Then we have this. This radio has an integral station monitor. That's one of the things that makes it so advanced. So when you're on frequency and talking, this gives you a waveform of your signal. 
allowing you to adjust things appropriately for the best quality signal. So it's quite fantastic, quite advanced for what, what it is. It has 25 vacuum tubes and um, it's going to need to be recapped as every radio of this age does. I've already gone and adjusted it so that it's got a three prong power cord. That's an important safety feature. Also to remove the capacitors that go between, there's caps that go between line and neutral and then neutral and chassis. With a two prong unpolarized um, plug, you can accidentally either make the chassis hot or if one of those caps um, fails short, you can make the chassis hot. So the thing I always do is always replace them with a three prong plug and um, at the very least you can go with the polarized two prong plug and then you must replace those capacitors with uh, X and Y rated safety capacitors. But yeah, otherwise, this is the radio. Now my understanding of power output, well, the finals are a pair of KT88s and that's the same amplifier tube that you'll find in Marshall guitar amplifiers. Pretty awesome. Unfortunately, that makes them kind of weird and expensive. Not awesome. So as I go through the radio, um, I'm going to obviously replace components and do a few things here and there. And we'll see if we can't get it up and test it. Right now it has low power output because one of the rectifier tubes was not working. It has two sets of rectifiers. The usual one for like 120 volts, like a 5U4, 5Y4 type rectifier. And then it has a pair of these that provide 600 volts. This is a 6AU4 GTA for the high voltage uh, for the uh, for the finals. So, yeah, that needs to be dealt with because right now it's putting out like six watts. <laughs> and I didn't realize that until I pulled out my Fleur, which is actually a, a nice modern way to uh, check on your tube equipment. I visually noted that back here, where there's now empties, the uh, one of the tubes appeared not to be glowing, but I couldn't really tell because it just, everything's kind of tight and it's high voltage. I didn't want to get back there with the, while well, the radio was on right away. Realize that tube was not glowing, hit it with the flur and realize, yeah, it was dead cold. So that gets, uh, that's on order. That will get replaced. And then um, we're going to start the inventory of all the capacitors that are going to need to be replaced and get replacing them. Anyway, so that's the tour of this fairly rare and fairly incredible well, 100V central electronics transmitter. And it's uh, 8310 meters. Anyway, thanks a lot for joining me. Have a good one.